a lot of people have been asking. They say, hey, Noah, you've been working from home for a long time. How do you keep motivated? How do you not play Xbox all day instead? And, and I get it. it. It's a weird transition to make. Now, to be clear, I have an unfair advantage. My job is to yell about all the dumb shit going on in the world. And that's what I'd be doing even if I didn't have to work. But I have some practical advice that really helped me a ton when I was first getting used to the home office thing. And that's dress for work. You know, it'll, it'll seem weird at first, but yeah, get up in the morning, go through the same routine you'd go through if you were actually going to go to work, make yourself presentable and all that shit, put on a suit or a uniform or a pair of slab shoes and a pork pie hat, whatever it is that makes you think I'm at work and wear that while you're working. And then when you're done working for the day, change out of that shit, right? Or like, you know, whatever, take off your tie or take off your bra, whatever it is that signals to you, okay, I'm done working for the day. And believe it or not, that makes a huge fucking difference. Suddenly you kind of feel like you actually went to work and then came home. You know, we used the same trick back in my neo-pagan days as well. It was a big deal that everybody made their own ceremonial robe. It's the only thing I've ever sewed in my life. It was a big deal that A, you always wore that same article of clothing whenever you did ritual magic and B, that you never wore it at any other time. And that made it easier to be solemn about this shit. It's pretty hard to take yourself seriously when you're like invoking the undines of the West, but it's significantly easier when you're wearing the right clothes. But more importantly, the robe made it easier for other people to take me seriously, too. You know, I know that's hard to believe. In the abstract, it doesn't seem like dressing up in an ill-fitted, wrinkly, amateurly stitched 200 thread count moo would make me more authoritative. But it turns out that the specifics of the clothes don't much matter. Let's face it, you'd need a big red nose or something to make an outfit sillier than the getup they put London cops in, and you still take them more or less seriously. It's the power of the uniform. It's what that uniform means to us culturally. Dark-colored robes means satanic magic wielding shit. Suit and tie means doing important stuff. Checkered edging and custodian helmets makes us think this person can tell me where to park, I guess. And of course, church has been using that same trick since forever, haven't they? You show up in a shitty room full of scratched up benches that smell like old people and you sit there for an eternity while some old guy yells random shit about Jesus. If it wasn't for the fact that everybody was wearing fancy clothes, it would be indistinguishable from going to a Greyhound station. But since everybody's wearing their Sunday best, it's suddenly a solemn occasion. You know, and this doesn't just work for the parishioners. Obviously, the church leaders take advantage of it as well. You don't see as much of it around here. It's something that most of the Baptist churches have moved away from, but they still occasionally toss on that, that smock of holiness or whatever. But Catholics, who like always look like some sad effort by Elizabethan chess pieces to dress sexy. I mean, sure, the, you know, the collar is pretty subtle, but these cardinals and bishops and whatnot, they, they walk around like the whole point of the outfit is to dare me to say something. Imagine... If there wasn't a whole church with all these centuries of tradition and shit, and there was just like one guy who dressed like a cardinal, everything from the El Mus to the Zucchetto, right? That motherfucker would put flaming bagpipe unicycling Darth Vader dude to shame. I mean, the Pope literally carries around a magical staff a la Gandalf and world leaders take him seriously. But that's no coincidence, right? It's not like it just so happens that in this time and place, that shit looks goofy to us. It always did. It's a common thread amongst regal imperial clothing. The crowns of the kings, the robes of the popes, the garments of high office, they have to be flamboyant. They have to stand out. They have to be something that nobody would choose to wear for fashion purposes or they don't work, right? These folks aren't trying to be trendsetters. They're trying to stand apart from you and above you. And sometimes... Part of that is wearing clothes that almost dare you to laugh at them. Of course, kind of fucks things up when you just laugh at them, though. You know, that, that, that's why they always whine about how we should respect their religion. It kind of requires that mindset for all this shit to work. If cops didn't wield any authority, we wouldn't have much respect for that uniform. We'd just be like, wow, that looks uncomfortably hot on a day like today. You know, like their uniform represents the power of the state, and that's a real thing. But the authority behind the liturgical garments is hollow. And so when I see the pope or one of his cardinals or bishops or whatever, I don't see the garments of high office that I'm supposed to see. I see a guy dressed up like a pedophile that doesn't care if you notice him. 
right? I see somebody dressed up like a professional liar. I see an antiquated person representing an antiquated institution founded on antiquated notions drawn from antiquated morals dressed appropriately in antiquated apparel. Because the imperious display of finery and feathers doesn't mean a goddamn thing once you realize that the clothes have no emperor.